Hello, everyone can hear me? Okay, good. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Gal Sagi. Uh, I'm presenting here with uh, Tony from uh, Red Hat and Muhammad from IBM. Uh, we are going to present Project Career. I usually open with a question here about if you know the project, if you heard about it, but this time I think the proper question will be anyone here didn't hear about Career before? Wow, okay. So we are either doing good or you are too shy. Um, so Project Career, uh, I want to start with a little story of how the project started because I think it makes a good point. Uh, me and Tony here didn't know each other around one and a year half ago. Uh, we first met at OpenStack Israel event. It's a one day where we're doing uh, OpenStack uh, slides and talks. And we met and we started talking about the problems uh, in containers networking and started throwing ideas about career. And from here to there, the project uh, was started. And the point that I was trying to make is that these summits and these gatherings or OpenStack days or meetups are a great place uh, for collaboration, for meeting new people and talking about common challenges. And my advice to you is spend the time to talk with the person sitting next to you and raise ideas and try to see how we can move this uh, project forward. So this is the outline of what we are going to talk about. I'll give a brief introduction about the project, then we'll talk about the current state, our Kubernetes integration and advanced policy, how all of you can get involved and help in the project and a quick demo that we'll have. So I talked how the project was started, but why did we start it? Well, we noticed back then that users were starting to deploy this new thing called containers and they were deploying it side by side with OpenStack, whether it's isolated or whether they want to uh, connect them in a virtual topology with the OpenStack workloads, running containers inside OpenStack VMs nested, and now the big deal is running OpenStack inside containers. And what we notice about all of these environments is that you would usually deploy a specific solution for containers with infrastructure and drivers, and specific solutions uh, for your OpenStack workloads. And we ask why? Why double this complexity? Why having so much elements just to implement something? And we started by looking at the first uh, step at networking. And what we notice is uh, for Kubernetes, for Docker, they are reinventing new networking abstractions like libnetwork, uh, like the CNM, CNI, and so on. And all of these new uh, abstraction have specific solution like uh, Flanel, Weave, that implements them. While we already have a pretty mature and production grade uh, ready abstraction in OpenStack that is called Neutron. What we also notice is that most of these solutions and most of these modeling are still uh, still in early stages and they are lacking a lot of security policy, a lot of advanced services and a lot of features that we have in OpenStack. In general, it was very hard to connect containers on one network with VMs and bare metal servers and we thought that it's not really necessary. And then uh, when we looked at these abstractions, uh, for example, Lib Network, and we compare them to Neutron, and I'm not going to get into the argument if VM networking is different than container networking. Uh, I think that right now the application is what matters. And when you're looking at a high level on all of these things, then they are pretty similar. You can express the connectivity uh, for containers with Neutron just as well. Another main problem uh, that we notice in this environment are nested containers inside VM. So many of these users were deploying uh, containers nested inside VMs to receive tenant isolation or to use some sort of uh, management tools they had for VMs. Uh, and when you look at these environments, they are 
they are a mess. I mean, uh, there is there's so much overhead and unneeded layers to connect two containers sitting at each different at two different VMs, uh, and we are. I mean, we are networking people, and we are happy with the first demo that we do is a ping, right? We do a ping, and then we all clap, and it's all working. But when you look at the day after the ping, okay, when you look at how you manage this, how you upgrade this, how you update and troubleshoot and debug this environment, then when you have two solutions, it's just double the complexity. It doesn't matter how good these solutions are. And there are already solutions in the Neutron ecosystem that solve these challenges. So career mission, uh, as you'll soon see, is exposing these features and these capabilities to you so you can leverage one networking infrastructure for OpenStack and for containers. Now we started, uh, we started on the networking side uh, and then when we move forward we noticed that the same problems exist in other areas, right? We have these problems for the networking, but also for the storage, also for authentication. And the way that we see Career now is kind of like a glue, a bridge layer between containers, ecosystem, and OpenStack. And right now, as uh, you'll soon see, where Tony and Muhammad will present, we have a full working integration with networking, essentially mapping. You could use Kubernetes or Docker API, and this maps out of the box uh, to OpenStack and to Neutron, so you can enrich your containers environment with all of these uh, capabilities and richness. And um, you don't have to worry about different solutions and different infrastructures uh, in your environment. Um, so, let's have a look at where we are right now uh, with Courier and what we have. Um, as you guys know, Courier is an OpenStack uh, project under the big tent. And as Gal mentioned a moment ago, it is the bridge between the services that are available in OpenStack uh, and containers. And uh, it aims to support all the container runtimes, starting with Docker, hopefully expanding into Rocket and whatever comes next. And we also wanted to um, support multi-node clustered environments, so whether it is Kubernetes or Docker Swarm or Mesos. So we want to uh, have all of these um, uh, container technologies supported. We are an OpenStack uh, a project, part of the OpenStack community, and we have been working uh, closely with uh, other projects in OpenStack, uh, in particular with Magnum, and I have to apologize for starting the session a bit late, because we were running um, from a design session we had with Magnum as we figure out how to provide the services that Courier has to Magnum. Uh, we have been working with Cola. You can essentially get a containerized version of Courier. And of course, we use Neutron and the storage services and Keystone uh, to provide all the services to containers. There is a pretty diverse group of people who now are working on these projects from various companies. Uh, newcomers are always welcome. Uh, we have a weekly uh, IRC meetings that you can easily join. Um, so let's look at the features that we have. Uh, we now support Keystone both version 2 and version 3. Uh, we started with Docker and LibNetwork, uh, and we have the Docker LibNetwork remote driver uh, and IPAM driver. We have partial support for Kubernetes. There is still some work to be done, but hopefully uh, we are going to uh, get that done uh, in this cycle. And um, we provide, <clears throat> as I mentioned, we started with networking and Docker, and we um, 
can essentially provide all the services that Neutron has to containers. In particular, beyond the basic resources, networks and subnets and subnet pools and load balancing and all that, we also provide security groups. And whatever we have in Neutron, as long as there is a reasonable counterpart in the container world, whether it is Docker or Kubernetes, we can essentially take advantage of that service and seamlessly provide that to the container. Um, I have a star over Swarm. This is the old Swarm uh, as of Docker 1.11. In Docker 1.12, a new Swarm was uh, introduced. And uh, uh, it has been, in the latest release, uh, limited to a particular driver that Docker has that has, uh, is going to be addressed. And hopefully, by the next release, uh, Docker 1.13, we should be able to uh, uh, take advantage of the Swarm mode as well. So let's l have a closer look at different components of Courier. There are some of the, uh, if you look at your right side, there are um, obviously pieces of code that uh, interfaces with Neutron services, whether it is Keystone, Neutron, or Cinder. There are some configuration management for Courier. And, um, port binding or plugging a virtual interface into the network. Um, in addition to these basic uh, uh, components, we have some uh, components that deal with supporting the networking model in Docker, which happens to be different from the networking model in Kubernetes. So we have a set of components that deal with n uh, networking in Kubernetes. And we pretty soon figured out that these components, those that deal with Docker and networking and those that deal with Kubernetes, have different requirements. They use different packages. In terms of packaging these services, it's best to package them separately. Um, Docker and Kubernetes have different uh, release cycles. So as new things are added, if you want to keep up with the changes, we need to be agile in uh, and uh, separating these pieces of code into different repos would be the best. So that's something that we did in the previous cycle, uh, the cycle that ended. Um, and it took a good amount of time, but we divided the career repository into three repositories. And right now we have the career repository, something that we call career leap, that has the basic components that is common between all the other uh, uh, repositories that are Courier Lib Network and Courier Kubernetes. So the Courier Lib is what is used by both Docker and Kubernetes implementation of Courier, and Courier Lib is uh, Lib Network is for Docker Lib Network, and Kubernetes is obviously for Kubernetes. So let's have a closer look at the the part that is common between both. Uh, Kubernetes and Courier. Uh, needless to say, uh, similar to what uh, Nova needs, you have to somehow connect your container to the network. Um, and similarly, uh, we do this plug-in and uh, plug out of virtual interfaces into the network. That is part of the common code, the Courier library. Um, if you look at the top uh, figure, that's kind of the most common use case where you have uh, containers in your uh, hosts. And the way you can connect your container into the network is by using a pair of virtual Ethernet interfaces and having one connected to the container, another one to your Neutron network. Um, during the past cycle, we have added support for Mac VLAN and IP VLAN. Uh, that allows you some form of um, networking uh, in nested environment. We plan to um, support VLAN and uh, you take advantage of subports and ports in Neutron to have a uh, full support for uh, connecting containers that are spawned in virtual machines um, in environments similar to what, for example, Magnum does. Uh, uses. So um, these are the three options that I have listed. And we have support for a bunch of uh, vendors that um, you may have 
seen them as net neutron plugins. Um, they, there is a small piece of code for plugging the ports again to the uh, networking infrastructure, and, and we support a bunch of um, uh, neutron plugins, whether it is Linux Bridge, OpenFlow, DragonFlow, Oven, uh, PlumGrid, Midonet, and if you have any other um, uh, Neutron plugin that you want to uh, take advantage of Courier, we will be happy to help you get that done. Just uh, to look at the, um, what is happening uh, under the cover a little bit more, uh, this is how you access or you create a network in Docker, uh, Docker Network Create, and with a bunch of options which specify the subnet you want to be used at the gateway, and finally, you specify a network name. Uh, as soon as you specify Courier as the driver, and as the IPAM driver, Courier will create this network. Um, and then you can spawn or create a container by uh, connecting it to the network that you just created by specifying the net option in Docker Run. So what happens when you create a network uh, and create a container that is connected to it? Under the covers, Courier creates a network, um, Neutron network. Um, and you can see that uh, when you see at, um, the output of Neutron netlist that I have shortened just to fit in the page, you see that the uh, Neutron network has been created. The name starts with Courier-net, followed by the beginning of the ID used for the container. If you look at the output of uh, the network that was created by Docker, the UUID of that network is 08192, and as you can see, the same kind of name is uh, partially used for the Neutron network. And we use uh, Neutron tags to keep this association between the Neutron network and uh, uh, Docker networks uh, in persistent storage. We don't add uh, any storage of our own. We don't keep uh, any persistent data beyond what is stored in Neutron. So you don't have to deal with any uh, complexity that uh, would arise from using yet another database. Um, you can connect your containers to existing Neutron networks that can be useful if you have a Neutron network that you are already using uh, for VMs or for uh, bare metals. Um, you can now use the same Neutron network for containers. You need to just specify either the name of the network, if it happens to be uh, unique, that would be good enough. Uh, if not, you have to use the UUID, and that would do the trick. This is, again, uh, more details about how this is done. Uh, if uh, you use an existing network, there is a tag that gets associated with that Neutron network. And uh, when um, you delete the network in Docker, for example, you don't delete it in Neutron because it was used by other reasons. And we uh, have some limitations with m much older versions, Liberty and beyond, that uh, be, uh, before, before that, that you can uh, look at later on. Um, to uh, have a closer look at uh, export ports, that's another option that Docker provides when uh, you can expose a certain ports uh, for certain protocols. That essentially gets um, implemented under the covers by Courier by using Neutron um, security groups. Here I have a, a Docker run that uses dash dash expose one, two, three, four is the port number, UDP, the protocol. And uh, just to show how, what is happening under the cover, I have uh, found the port that is associated with this container that just got created. Um, you can see the uh, output of Neutron port list. And uh, if you look at the port more closely using a Neutron port show, you can see that now there are two security groups associated with the port. One is the default security groups, if you have a default security group, and the other one is the one that we just created, and 
You can specify a range of ports, different ports and protocols and all that, and they get translated to security group rules in Neutron and get associated with the port. With that, I hand it to um, Tony. Uh, hi. Can you see, hear me well? Yeah, I think so. Uh, all right, so how many of you are familiar with uh, Kubernetes? Good. Okay, so this slide is probably a bit redundant, but basically what I'm telling here is what Kubernetes is. It's a container orchestration engine. Uh, the components it has, uh, namely the, the API server, the uh, control manager, the scheduler, and the, and the kubelet. And uh, the way to interface with it in terms of networking is the, the container network interface, which is sort of a standard. Uh, of course, the, the Docker doesn't follow because they have their own, uh, maybe earlier, I'm not, I don't remember, CNM. And, uh, and what it does is it gives you the option of adding containers to a network and removing containers to a network. It doesn't really specify which network. That is up to the configuration that, that you put on the host or that you get from somewhere else, as, as you will see. So our integration, by the way, if you have questions, like I'll, we can take them at the end. I'll try to go fast so there will be time for that, even with the demo. Uh, so we have a, a watcher uh, that, that what it does, it, it connects to the Kubernetes resources. Uh, in a watch endpoint, so it, everything that happens in the Kubernetes API generates an event that we get. Then we translate that to uh, Neutron operations. We go then back to Kubernetes and we annotate the Kubernetes resource with information about the Neutron resource that we created or modified or whatever. And then this information in Kubernetes is seen by the CNI driver, which finally plugs the things into place. So it's, from the definition, you could see that the only things that interface with the Neutron API is the watcher, but with the uh, Kubernetes API, both the CNI driver and, uh, and the watcher interface. All right, so here you can see it a bit more visually how a deployment would look like. Uh, so typically on the master node, you have the Kubernetes API and the controller manager. We add to that the watcher, the watcher can't really run anywhere, but if you just have a few machines, you can put it there. It's probably the most logical place, which is where it talks the most with. Uh, it also needs to be able to talk to Neutron, obviously. And then uh, on each of the controller no uh, sorry, worker nodes, we need the CNI driver. The CNI driver should be able to talk uh, already to Kubernetes API because that's, that's how it works, basically. So we da don't uh, add any uh, kind of uh, requirement because it just, it just goes there to Kubernetes API to, to get the port information. And uh, the thing that we're adding in this uh, cycle, in the previous cycle in, in um, in Austin, you could see that we demoed Swarm talking uh, to Kubernetes over uh, Courier uh, provided neutron networks. And now what we're doing is we're working on Courier to make it highly available, the watcher, so that if it falls, you will not be left up to figure out uh, if you started, if something, some namespace was created, some resource was created, and so on. So, in the, in the reference implementation of uh, Kubernetes, uh, what you have, it, it's on your right, uh, what you can see is that there is kube proxy redirecting from any port or any endpoint to uh, a specific container running either on that machine or another machine. And, and that maps to, the, to the, what you have on your left hand side, which is the, the API resources, which there is a service endpoint, and then there are uh, pods uh, that are endpoints to that, to that service. And the service IP is con considered a, a virtual IP. So the way that we do that is using uh, Neutron. Obviously, we use Neutron for everything. So it's uh, using LBAS, this time V2. In the, in the last summit, we presented with V1, but that is, that is gone. I saw a patch that removed it completely, so we had to upgrade to that. And uh, so what we do is that for inter, intra-cluster communication, we just uh, go from pods to a load balancer in Neutron. So depending on which uh, Neutron vendor you have, it's going to be one way or another. 
and uh, then it just goes to, to the other ports. So you will, if you know Kubernetes, you will be wondering, so is this uh, equivalent to the, to the load balancer type that uh, Kubernetes already has for uh, OpenStack? And the answer is almost. It's not exactly the same. So how we implement the load balancer type is we just keep the service load balancer that you can see here. But on top of that, the only thing that we need to do is add a floating IP. So then it's already uh, externally accessible. So you do not need Kubernetes to have to go and talk to, to Neutron anymore with, with that plugin. All right. So that was all well for uh, bare metal, but when you want to get to uh, nested environments, you need something more. And, and like uh, Mohammed explained for, uh, for the, the binding part, here it's a bit of the same. So we use the IP VLAN, MAC VLAN, uh, and, and the VLAN, sorry, the neutron ports and supports to, to give you that access. And uh, we only have tried it with Neutron, uh, provided uh, LBAS, but it should also work with Octavia. The problem that we see now with Octavia is that, unless I missed something that happened very recently, it uses VMs to create the HA proxies. Uh, and we would probably like to, to have the load balancing happen at a container level or somewhere that, that was more uh, distributed so that it would be uh, on a feature parity or a reliability parity with, uh, with cube proxy, uh, not just better in terms of network properties. So how do you get involved? Uh, well, there is something that we already have, which is the, the packaging um, in terms of container packaging. So the container packaging that we have is every time that there is a new commit, uh, I have a service that pushes it to Docker Hub so you can try it. That is the default configuration. Of course, if you want any other kind of configuration, you can build it yourself. It's very easy. You can use DevStack. We have plugins for that. But then a good way to get involved, uh, oh, of course, we have Cola integration that uh, Hui Kang from IBM contributed. Uh, so Cola is the way to, to deploy it, but only for the Docker uh, integration, not for the Kubernetes. That we will add very soon, I hope. And uh, for uh, the distribution packaging, that, that's something that if anybody wants to contribute, I'll be, I will be very happy. I have already uh, the system defiles, but uh, we need uh, to, to work the rest. So the, the priorities in this cycle are very clearly to finish the Kubernetes integration with HA support, with uh, the properties above. We have design sessions that I will show tomorrow uh, to talk about these aspects, HA and multi-tenancy. The policy will probably come a bit later, the new uh, policy resources in the, in the Kubernetes API. And then uh, the Magnum integration, which we have been discussing and that made us be late for this session. Uh, but the nested work has already been ongoing and we will show it in the demo. Luis here will show it in a moment if I stop speaking for a while. And uh, finally, to, to make the releases. So we have storage, uh, we have Fushi driver, and we have a session also tomorrow to talk about that with the Cinder people, that they have a Go driver, and we have to uh, see how these two efforts uh, converge. And the work sessions, the Courier Magnum, you're too late for that already. But if you want to join any of the other ones, you're more than welcome. We especially look forward uh, operator feedback, people that have use cases that they maybe would want to use Courier, but we don't cover them. So uh, your voice needs to be heard so that we can work on that. And if you want to, to contribute, you can file blueprints, you can file bugs, you can come to the weekly IRC meetings. Uh, they happen every week at 2 UTC uh, afternoon. And there are some getting started guides. Don't worry if you don't ha cannot copy this. The, I will update the slides later and tweet about that. But now let's get to the, to the demo that Luis here will do. And uh, if the, it's live, because it's a rule we have, only live demos. If, uh, let's, let's see if the demo gods respect us today. Okay. Can you hear me OK? Cool. Oh, that's good. I hate the trackpad, so I brought the mouse.
That's probably a little small, right? Is that okay? Okay. Uh, so what we have running here is a dev stack, and then I have two VMs running with Fedora Server 24. Uh, we picked that because it has the IPVLAN driver installed. So what I'll be showing you is using the IPVLAN. You could use Mac VLAN as well. We just chose to use IPVLAN. So I'm just going to show you first. So this is our dev stack user, and I'm just hopefully it's connected. Or maybe not. No. What did it do? Oh, it closed. Okay. Sorry. No. This is what a live demo does, I guess. So here, I'm just going to show you that um, we just have two networks created, a uh, private and a public one. So I'm going to join the private one, and all of these give up. OK. So on this VM, one second, log in. So I'm just going to, I'll have to rerun the script. So. so I'm just going to create a Docker network and join with the courier driver and join the connect, uh, join the existing um, Private network there, so hopefully. Uh, so as you see there, the U U UID of the network is in, so that's how it's joining it. So that's created there, and I'll just show you in my DevSec user that no new network was created. So we still just have our public and private. So then I'm just going to run a container on that network. Hopefully it won't be too slow. Uh, so we should have a IP address in our 10. So we 10.0.79. So then on this other VM, I'm also going to create a network. But first, I'll show you. So to allow the I, the container to ping outside, you have to associate the IP address to the port of the VM. So if I just show you the ports, so the VM is 10.0.31. So if I just show you. The, um, I'll show you the port and that the IP address is associated with this. Oopsies, I copied too much. Too much. Yeah. Okay. One, and then we get the other half. Okay, hopefully that works. Ah, oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So we can see that 79 is associated with it. So then what I'm going to do here is reset this one. So then this one, I'm just going to create a container again and just show that they can ping between them. Oh, that's wrong. So I'll have to this again. So 
So once again, I'll just, oh, it's already running, that's okay. I should be able to actually, so I should be able to run it directly, hopefully. Uh, so we'll see you got a 10.80, so if I can ping between, so the other one was 10.79, right? Yeah. So, 79. Uh, uh, so I'll just quickly show as well, just the, it can ping the other uh, VM on the network as well, so it's not just containers, it can ping whatever. As we said before, the, the pings make us happy. So uh, if you have any other question, we're kind of off, uh, about to be out of time. But if you have any question now or you want to catch us later. Ah, the, to show the port. Of the? Of the new VM. Yeah. That, uh, the other one? No, it was working. Don't spoil it. <laughs> <laughs> the other one will have 30, is 32, right? Uh, yeah, it's 32, yeah. Where is 32? Oh, there. Oh, yeah. yeah, maybe reduce the size, yeah. So you can copy all at once. Sorry, right, you're not going to be able to. No, it doesn't want to. In the meantime, I have a question for you guys. Uh, sure, go ahead. Do you have an idea of the scalability limits? Mm -hmm. uh, all right, so the question was about, well, everybody heard the scalability limits. Uh, the scalability limit, of course, is the, the one of your neutron vendor. Right, so, but then obviously with containers, you're pushing the boundaries even further. So right. have you guys have heard of any like uh, field feedback so far? Or? Um, so for the, for the reference implementation of, of neutron, if you would be using a lot of, um, of security group magic and so on. So obviously the, you would have the IP tables problems, but now that there is the new contract driver, that should be taken care of. If you are putting each uh, tier of your application in a separate uh, network, or sometimes everything on the same network, some other the drivers like uh, Midonet, if you put a lot of ports in the same bridge, which typically doesn't happen so much in VMs, but if you would say, I don't know, I make a slash eight and I put all my containers there, that would be a problem because then you would get all the broadcasts uh, so, uh, killing I'll, you there. I'll ask the question differently and then I'll, 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 uh, sure. I'll let someone else uh, to take the mic. But, so, so far, some, some, some folks have complained that Neutron doesn't scale. So you, in your experience with Courier and Dogger and other orchestrated environments, I haven't heard this type of feedback. It's like, why do you use Neutron if it doesn't scale? Um, why not like start with something that, uh, from, you know, something newer sure. that can uh, be... Can be so the, the idea not of not to, uh, sorry, so the question is, why, why do you use Neutron networks if there is a concern that they may not scale? Uh, so the, the answer to that is that uh, the reason Courier exists is so that uh, you can have all your infrastructure under the same networking and under the same support. To the concerns about scale, uh, I'm aware of, uh, of some of the Neutron solutions scaling to thousands of nodes. Uh, and and, and this, this is for the agent running on the machine. And, and the limitation is for some of the of the neutron drivers of how many nodes it can it can run not so much to how many ports it can be bound so that doesn't really worry me a lot like i'm i'm sure that there are neutron drivers that are not going to be a good choice for this but uh, you, it depends on what you use of course like here we have people that were reporting to me a lot of uh, of nodes the other day so it makes me feel calm so in Docker 1.12, the uh, service or the distributed load balancer is implemented with an IPVS namespace. Right. Um, are you looking into replacing that with uh, a load balancing as a service as you uh, did here? Or right. are you asking the Docker guys to actually patch this IPVS namespace into a neutron network and make it a, doc, a neutron port? So the, the current idea, I've not checked uh, much since it doesn't allow you to choose anything else yeah. than, the, than the overlay driver. 
I haven't really checked uh, which is the best way to do it, but the current thought we had was to, if Lib Network adds uh, a call uh, to us, to our Lib Network driver, about doing something about the service, to do it there and ignore completely the IPVS part. So mm -hmm. to, 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 to leverage so, LBASB2. Yeah, it doesn't look like that Docker wants that kind of service, whatever it is in uh, swarm mode, uh, in a pluggable um, fashion. Mm. So those services are all being added to the engine as such. Okay. It is beyond the Docker uh, networking uh, lib network or IPAN driver. Sorry, um, sorry. Uh, that's we, a we long discussion ahead. to have uh, with Docker, I guess. Yeah. But yeah. as of now, uh, the of idea is that those things are em embedded <laughs> in the engine. And if, you, if it, you want to use it, use it. If you don't want to use it, don't use it. Yeah, we have to we have to close. So if you have any other question, you can catch us uh, because <laughs> there's another presentation in four minutes.